coming doing our, our singing this morning it's always good to have him with us and especially when he leaves to sing and we appreciate it and good to see his family with him today Daniel and them good to see y'all with us today and all any any of our visitors we're glad you come we always start with our verse here Colossians 4 2 if you will look at the screen and repeat it with me the Bible says continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving we've got just a few announcements we'll get back to the singing uh but I'd like uh, uh, Brother Gill, if he will, open us up in word of prayer and we'll get, get our announcements. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gill. And, uh, we're excited to announce next Sunday morning we will begin our small group study and our children's church. That's June the 21st. Uh, Sunday school begin at 9.30, so y'all make sure and come on out and help us get the word out. But uh, we'll be social distant. We'll be doing the guidelines and, and making sure. But we will get to start Sunday school next Sunday, so come on out and bring the kids. Uh, if you know some kids, you know right now we're not going to run the bus for about another four or five weeks. We're sort of, it's day to day. Y'all just bear with us. We're, we're going by recommendations of uh, some other people we're talking to. So right now we're not going to run the bus. So 
But if you can get them here, uh, bring them on out, and, uh, but we will be doing that. And uh, just show you, you know, we, uh, the Bible, our, our Sunday school lesson today, you know, or just how God's in, involved in our lives so much, but our Sunday school lesson today would have been our hope in Christ changes how we view the world and live it out. And our theme for the month is just living with hope in a broken world. How on target is that today in our, in our Bible study? I mean, they write, these, they write these lessons years ahead of time. How, how did that happen? You know, living in a broken world. You know, you know live, uh, living with hope in a broken world. Now, hope is in Christ. It's not in man. It's not in the world. But I, I was reading that, and I thought, wow. I mean, right on target with, with what we're going through today. So y'all come on out. Our adult classes will be studying that. Come on out at 930. Uh, children, they got plenty of lessons. We got lessons for all ages, so come on out and and be a part of our Sunday school. Uh, next Saturday evening, next Saturday we're gonna do a bomb. We're gonna have a bonfire for the kids. They're gonna do some s'mores, and it's not just for the kids. We're gonna have ice cream. We're gonna we're gonna have, ask some members if they will just bring your ice cream maker. We're gonna make some ice cream, so it's for the adults too, the big kids. So y'all come on out about six o'clock. We're gonna have pizza, and they're gonna do some. Uh, S'mores, and we're just going to fellowship. Might, we've got some cornhole games. We may play a few games, but come on out, uh, adults and all. We're going to start about 6 o'clock, and they're talking about shooting a few fireworks, so we might try and do that just a little bit. So come on out, uh, 6 o'clock. That's next Saturday, and bring the kids with you for fellowship. And uh, just get out there, bring your lawn chair. We'll be outside and just have a good time. We'll wait till the end of the evening where to cool off a little bit so and get out there and have a good time. So. But that's all the announcements I got at this time. Uh, hey, Marie, if you want to come back. I'm so used to telling you what page to turn to, but since you don't need to, let's tell, tell me the story of Jesus. <clears throat>
If you don't use it, you lose it. Well, that's the way I am with singing. I hadn't used it in a while, and I don't have nobody to holler at, so, you know, y'all have to bear with me. All right, at Calvary. <clears throat> Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified. No. verse talks about uh, now how sweet to hold our newborn baby and it says about what that child is going to have to deal with you know I got grandkids that's real young I see a lot of children here you know we were lucky to grow up into basically a Christian nation and we didn't see a lot of things but these children if the Lord doesn't come back, are going to see some things that's going to really test them. And I, I pray that the parents and, and y'all, us, would teach them to know that they have somebody standing that's seated beside God that is interceding for them. And, and he's alive today. He, he died on a cross, just like that last song said. He died, but he's there alive and he's there for me. He's there for you. And I hope these kids will know, if the Lord doesn't come back, what they're going to have to deal with, that he's there for them. And, you know, I, I, because he lives. Because he lives. <clears throat> Indeed. 
Sharon, it's always good to have you here, Brother Rick. Good to see your family here today. Good to see you here today. Hey, man, filled up a little bit since I sat down. Before I sat down, I thought, well, I guess everybody's going to try to stay home today, watch it on TV. But uh, I'm glad you came. It's good to get out again after being shut in so long. And I found you can just piddle so much. Hey, man, um, around the house. Uh, I'm dialyzing, you know, I found that you're going to read so much. You're going to watch so much TV, <laughs> you know, but, but I'm always trying to read something, make the best of the situation, you know. You try to learn something, you know, by reading. But um, we uh, next Sunday, of course, is a big day. It's Father's Day. And it's a big day, too, because we start our Sunday school back. Next Sunday morning at 930 now, we tried that once at 9 o'clock. That didn't work too well. I thought the elder would get up, you know, be ready to go. No, no, no that didn't work. It's amazing how much 30 minutes makes a difference. You know, just 30 minutes. But at 9.30, Sunday school, uh, preaching and worship be at 10.30. And hopefully, 
will get out at 1130 before your stomachs get to growling. Amen. Um, I know I went over five or ten minutes last Sunday, but I, I didn't get up here to ten after eleven. I looked at that clock and I said, hmm, twenty minutes. I ain't going to get me long right there. So, but you got to go to the Lord says, all right, that's enough. Sit down and shut up. Um, but uh, we'll have a gift. Usually what we do for the youngest and the oldest and the most children present. All right. So not, not if you got the most children, but they have to be here. Most children present, all right? Youngest, oldest, and the most children present. We want to honor our daddies next week. Um, and uh, I won't be teaching Brother Ben's class um, until he gets better. You know, he had back surgery, so I'll be doing that. Brother Keith will be teaching the young adult class. Brother James, you know, is Brother Ben's class. Brother James Daly's class, Brother Ben. They call it the Jolly Sixties. But they was like 80. So we just had never changed the name of it. <laughs> but I'm still in my 60s. So it's a jolly 60s. Amen. But if you're 80, you can still come because this class here, you don't move up. We got classes from Joy, Rangers on up. But when you get in that class, the next graduation is <laughs> go home and be with the Lord. Amen. <laughs> And, uh, but, but if you're watching by, you know, YouTube, um, we, uh, well, you can't watch it YouTube. We had an issue with music rights on that, I think. They wouldn't let us post it. Uh, but uh, we have, uh, uh, all, you can go to our, our web page, greenbarbaptistchurch.net. I believe it'll be on there. Is that right, Brother Keith? And also on our Facebook homepage. Look for Greenbar Baptist Facebook homepage. It'll be on there. So we want to acknowledge our elderly at home. We have, I know my mama, hey mama, uh, hey mama, and uh, watching at home. She enjoys it, and she just hates so bad that she can't be here. She worries about it, and I tell her, I said, Mom, everybody knows that you can't, you know, you, you just can't come. Uh, but uh, yeah, she always said, we tell everybody, I said hi, so I'm telling all y'all hi for her, amen. And uh, so everybody watching, but if you can, come on back, and uh, because we need each other. Amen. I always tell you, we're going to spend eternity with people in, he people in heaven, with the Lord in heaven. Not with things, but with people. And so God uh, means for us to be together. Uh, if you'll notice, why does the Bible call us sheep? Because they flock together. Now if, you, now, if you notice nature, that's what they do. Sheep will flock together. But a goat, they spread out. I, I pass a pasture up there going to Ardmore quite often. They got goats out there, they got cows, and they got geese. They all in their own little world. I mean, they, they, the goats are just all over that pasture. They don't flock together. But the sheep, you go by a sheep flock, they flock together. And that's the way God's people are. We flock together. We, that's, that's part of the reason he called us sheep. So come on out next Sunday. And also um, the uh, offering uh, plates out there, uh, lest you forget. But it's out there. If you'd like to drop the offering in there, just drop it in there. And um, uh, when you go out, all right, we appreciate that. If you have your Bible, we'll turn over to Daniel chapter 5 this morning. I'm going I'm to preach this morning, uh, Wade in God's Scales. Wade in God's Scales. Um, in Daniel chapter 5, I want to read the first part of Daniel chapter 5 down to about verse 5, 1 through 5. And then I'm going to skip over to verse about uh, 24 and read down to about 31 over there rather than read the whole chapter. That'll give us a gist about what I'm trying to uh, talk about this morning. All right? Uh, but the story is about Daniel Day uh, uh, when he was uh, carried captive from Israel. Because of um, Israel's sins. And you know what our problem is today, folks? It's our hearts. <laughs> you know, somebody said the other day, you know, why do we have uh, laws on the book? 17,000 laws up there where we can't even obey 10. Amen? So see, our problem is our heart. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked in the book of Jeremiah. It's desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? That's what God says about the heart. Amen. So our problem is our heart. 
If we get our hearts right with God, you know what will happen in this country? We'll love our neighbor. Amen. I'll amen that. If y'all don't want amen, I will. It's amen. We'll love our neighbor. The Bible said love works no ill toward his neighbor. And that's the, that's the Christian gospel message. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Now, if we would do that, we wouldn't have any problems at all. And so why do we have the problems in this country today? Because we are wanting. We've been weighed in God's balances, and we are lacking. We are wanting, aren't we? Because we got a bunch of people walking around uh, without the Spirit of God in them. The Spirit of God will convict you of your sin or your hatred or whatever it might be. He'll convict you of that. He'll convict you. He'll straighten you out. That's what the Lord does. See, when you get saved, oh, you heard the saying, uh, you know, you people catch some fish, and you say, hey, you want some fish? And you say, are they clean? Don't we do, we do that? If you, I, you can bring them over here and clean them. If you don't clean them, I don't want them. But when God catches you, he cleans you too. He cleans you up. I mean, he, it may, it's a sanctification process. It may take him a while because he's dealing with a hard, hard heart. He's dealing with a hard head. Amen? And our pride keeps us from doing the things that God wants us to do. God has to work through that, see? And, and, and so God uh, won't uh, uh, force your will. He'll cause you to change your heart, yourself. You know what I'm saying? This is what I need. He'll convict you. This is what I need to do because God convicted me of it. He won't force you to change. He won't make you change. But he'll, he'll convict you of it. Amen. He'll give you the... And then if you don't change, he'll judge you. He said, we'll judge ourselves, then we won't be judged by the Lord himself. See? So he gives us that opportunity. So let's read before I get too far in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 5. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which is in Jerusalem. So Daniel here is 80 years old. He's living over in the ba land of Babylon, about 600 miles away from or so from uh, Jerusalem. He's carried captive as a teenager over to Babylon, and now he's about 80 years old. And now Nebuchadnezzar has ruled, and we know the story about the king Nebuchadnezzar. He was a sovereign king. God had given him a kingdom that, that he was sovereign. He could do whatever he wanted to. And um, here is his, actually his grandson, Belshazzar, had come along and is ruling this kingdom now, and he's an upstart. You remember the story about Nebuchadnezzar when, uh, I believe Nebuchadnezzar saved today. I believe he's in heaven because the chapter before that tells us about what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He was stricken with a disease, and he thought he was a wild animal. That his power went to his head. He was so egotistical and self-centered that God judged that man, and he humbled him, and it caused Nebuchadnezzar to humble himself in the eyes of God, and then God lifted him up, and he began to praise and extol the virtues of the God of heaven. Amen? That's why I say I believe Nebuchadnezzar is saved day in heaven. But he comes along his grandson, and, and D Daniel has to get on to him. They, they call this aged man called Daniel to come in and interpret a right, and he's seen on the wall because the kingdom had deteriorated. And they had forgotten God. They'd forgotten the things that God had done for the uh, Babylonian kingdom. And every kingdom that is on this earth is there because God has willed it. Amen. You read that first, second chapter of Daniel. So uh, these are things he's taken out of the temple in Jerusalem uh, that Nebuchadnezzar, his grandfather, had taken that the king, his uh, princes, his wives, and his concubine might drink therein. And then they brought out the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king, his princes, and his wives, and concubine drank in them. And they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, brass, iron, of wood, and of stone. And the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees knocked one against another. Now, that's pretty scared, amen. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and he said, Whoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation shall be clothed with scarlet, 
and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Let's skip over here to verse about 24. So he's called in Daniel. None of them could interpret this right. And so Daniel's called in. He's retired. He's an old age man, about 80 years old. And they sent it for him. He comes in and he gives them a pretty good message there in verse 22 on down to 23. And he says, uh, then was the part of the hand sent from him. And this was, this is the writing, uh, this writing was written. And this uh, is the writing was written. Many, many, tickle you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou hast, art weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. And that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. And Darius the Mede took the kingdom, being about 62 years old. Let's pray. Father, we come today. Lord, we know you're, you have scales of justice that must be balanced. And Lord, one day you, you're going to uh, judge this world. And Lord, you're going to judge every single person in it. Whether we're saved or whether we're not saved. There's going to be a great separation that day, Lord, between the goats and the sheep. And Lord, I, I pray today you help us consider where we stand with you today because time is short. I believe we're living in the last days, Lord, the days that we'll see you coming in the clouds of glory, coming after your church. And so, Lord, I pray that you convict our hearts today. If there's those that are struggling in sin today, I pray that you help them to overcome it, to repent of it. Lord, those that are in the hospitals today, I pray for them. I lift them up to you. I ask you healing on them. Those that are hurting today, Lord, I pray that you come to the one that received the most hurt in the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that we can get comfort from you. You've been, you've been through it already. You know what it's like. And so, Lord, we, we don't have a God that not, has not been felt with the feelings of our infirmities. But in all points, attempted as we are, are but yet without sin. And so, Lord, speak to our hearts today and draw us closer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You know, we talk about scales here today and um, weight, being weighed in God's scales. Uh, you know, the Bible says God loves just, wells, uh, just scales and measurements. You know, he does. He, really, he wants you to be honest. He wants his people to be honest. And, and, and uh, uh, over in Leviticus, I mean, it goes back into the old law. It said, just balances and just weights, a just ephah, which is a bushel, a true bushel, and a just hen, that's about two quarts, I mean two gallons, a hen, you shall you have. I am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And there's several verses there in Proverbs 11. I do this phone here because it's, it's a lot quicker than me flopping back in this book, the uh, Bible here. Uh, and Proverbs 11, 1, it said, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So he wants us to be, be true and honest as his people. And so God, God loves uh, just scales and weights and, and in everything of our lives. And he's going to weigh us in the scale of justice one day. And see, he, he's, he's, gonna, he's weighing Belshazzar right now in the scales of justice. Now, you don't think God did not weigh a man named Hitler in the scales of justice when he died? He eventually had to face the music, didn't he? Uh, why don't God let us live forever in the state we're in? Can you imagine people like Hitler living forever here? See, when God, when we sin, when Adam and Eve sinned, he said he put a flaming cherub right there at the garden where they couldn't enter. He said, lest they eat of that tree of life and live forever. He's talking about in their condition, in their sin, live forever. So even with death, God had mercy on us. Amen? Because people like uh, Stalin and Hitler and people that's been responsible for millions and millions of deaths, um, just as they are finally weighed in God's scales of justice. And this is happening this night and this story we're reading today about Belshazzar. Um, I read a story yesterday. I was talking about scales and weights. Uh, years ago in a, an old country town, 
uh, when they used to use the balances like you see there on the thing, you see them on your TV. That's, that's the kind of scales they used to use and what they do is balance out. Now, see, that's what we think we say, too, by balancing our good deeds and bad deeds. But the Bible doesn't teach that. You know, you can teach either uh, things from the Bible, you can be saved by works or by grace. Now, which is it? Is it both? Which one's going to wait? Which one's going to go down more? Which one's going to even it out? Um, it's going to be grace. The Bible clearly teaches you're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. But we're talking about sin here today, amen? We're talking about pride. We're talking about sometimes God judges men. Sometimes he judges nations, and all through history he has judged nations. Amen? He's judged them. And folks, how far it is in our nation before God judges us? The, the nations God is the hardest on is the ones that knew him and drifted away from him. I want you to understand that. Not the ones that didn't ever know him. He says, woe to them that forget the Lord thy God. They shall be, the nations that forget the God, they'll be turned into hell. Amen? So we're seeing that in our streets, but he's talking about total and utter annihilation and destruction. See, our greatest enemy, you know who it is? It's not all this stuff going on in the world. Our greatest enemy is God. Jesus came to save us from God. Because we were under the wrath of God. You understand that? Jesus saved us from the wrath of God. We hear, well, God is love. Well, the Bible teaches that. He is love. But he had to do something to save us. He couldn't just forgive us. It had to be paid for. He weighed us in his scale to justice through the cross of Christ. Amen? That's how he, he, that's how he evened out the scales. With the cross of Christ by Jesus dying for us and taking our punishment and our sins. And he said, there's now no, therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus today? No condemnation. But if you're not, in John 3, 36, he said... You're still under condemnation. You're still under condemnation. But years ago, uh, in the old country, they used those old scales to uh, make purchases. And what they'd do, they'd balance the scales out. A baker sued a farmer uh, for fraud over a pound of butter. And he, he said that he'd been buying from him. He said, when I first started buying this butter, he said, I'd get a, a, a real pound. But he said... Uh, over time, he said, it's getting to be less and less. He said, now I'm getting about three-fourths of a pound. And he's telling the judge that when he, you know, telling the judge when he carried him to court. So a farmer gets up for the judge his own defense, and he says, well, sir, said, I just got a balanced scale to weigh out my butter. And he says, I always put the baker's pound of bread loaf on the other side of the balance of that where I know he'd get a pound of butter. Y'all get that? The baker's cheating people. <laughs> He's suing the farmer for, for not giving a pound of butter, but, but his, his loaves of bread wasn't weighing a pound either. Amen? Isn't that, isn't that ironic? Amen? Because he's suing him. Same thing. We all done that. Baker was cheating himself. And um, somebody said they solved their weight problem. They bought a new metric scale. And two things about it, they... They don't weigh as much as they used to. You know, when in metric scales, you weigh half as much as you do on the regular, about half as much. And he said, beside that, they couldn't read it. Amen. <laughs> they know how to. They know how to interpret it. Um, and uh, they're talking about this story about this many, many tickle you farce. And said, a man is a foreigner. Uh, had come over and visited his daughter. Had been living here a while, and he didn't speak too good English. And she got on him about going to church. So he, her, her name was Minnie, and. Uh, go to church and he finally agreed to go one Sunday and so the, the text the preacher picked out was well, this one right here it said many many tickle you farson said he read from that and said all of a sudden he grabbed his daughter by the hand they run out the back door and she got out there and he says well granddaddy daddy what's wrong with you he said well did you hear what the preacher said to you many come tickle the parson <laughs> Amen. oh well get our laugh for the day I guess y'all don't know how to take me sometime. But here we have today, um, Belshazzar weighed in the scales and found wanting. Same with 
all of us. We've been weighed in God's scale and found one. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, this Belshazzar, he was a spoiled young man. He was used to luxury. Sound like the United States. We got a generation today that's been given everything. Amen? They, they, they got an entitlement mentality. Y'all owe it to me. I don't have to work for it. And that's what's wrong with today. This is Belshazzar. It's no different. Amen? No different at all. And so he began to treat God's things with contempt and disregard. He mocked and insulted the God of heaven. That sound familiar today in a generation? You think God is going to let that go? He did not let it go with Belshazzar. He let it go for a while. But one night, God says, all right, I've had it up to here. Tonight you'll not, Belshazzar. You're going to die tonight. Tonight, your soul is going to be required of you. And then who these things going to be? That's what he told that guy. New, Jesus said about the story about the, the rich man in the New Testament. Tonight, then who will these? You fool. Then who will these things be? Amen. Um, so we see him. And we see that in verses 2 and 3 where he commanded to bring the golden vessels that his granddaddy, Nebuchadnezzar, had, had taken and and stolen out of the temple in Jerusalem, brought them to Babylon. Go get those golden utensils that they use in the house of God. We're going to drink wine of them. We're going to mock the God of heaven, and we're going to honor our gods of silver and gold. It didn't go over too well with the Lord. He, he thought it was going to be a big party. Thousands of his lords there, thousands of his, his uh, people that helped him run his kingdom, and uh, the Bible tells us that God is not mocked. Amen. Don't you remember that, young people? The Bible said God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. Amen. If you sow to your flesh, you're going to reap destruction. If you sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap life everlasting. Amen. So that's why the Bible said to be led by the Spirit. Don't say to be driven by the Spirit. It said to be led by the Spirit. That's somebody that takes you along by the hand and leads you along. Amen. God will never force you. He'll never drive you. The devil will drive you. You let him get a hold of you with some alcohol or drugs. He'll drive you. But the Holy Spirit of God leads you. It's a big difference, isn't it? It's a big difference. So the giving over to adultery, total de debauchery, orgies, all that going on this night. Sound familiar? All right. And then in verse 5, he gets a sudden supernatural surprise. You know what's going to happen to this world one day? We're going to get a sudden supernatural surprise. Millions of people is going to be lifted up one day. It's called the rapture of the church. A lot of people don't believe in it. They just believe it when Jesus comes, it's going to be over. But why did Jesus say, you be ready in an hour? I'm going to come in an hour, you least expect me. Now, if I'm looking and seeing the planets driven from their courses, he said, then you'll see the Son of Man coming in power and great glory. Every eye shall see him. But he tells us, you be ready. Be ready. I may come at midnight, evening, morning. You don't know. But there'll be some signs and seasons that precede it. We're seeing them right now. And so he gets this sudden supernatural surprise. He sees a fing fingers of a man's hand appear, and it begins to write on the wall. Wouldn't that scare you to death? And my mama's seeing stuff right now, y'all. <laughs> Man, she can tell you some stuff, and we like, what? <laughs> but, you know, that's just... Age, I guess. I, you know, it's just age. and um, But this is real. This is real. Um, and his, uh, his countenance changed very quickly. He went from this brash, partying animal to all of a sudden his knees is knocking together. The Bible tells us his knees smoked together. I mean, he was, it was pretty shocking to him to see what he's seen. He knew it was real. In verse 6... And he calls all the soothsayers and astrologers and everybody, I need an answer. What does it mean? What does this writing mean on here? He knew it meant something. And nobody had an answer except one old prophet, an 80-year-old. God's always got a man. A man somewhere, he's got a man. 
and this one was Daniel, and he was called. And uh, uh, so he preaches Belshazzar a message. You can read it there in uh, verses uh, 13 uh, uh, down to about 17, down to about uh, 20 or so. He says, Belshazzar, he reminded him of his granddaddy how that God had dealt with him and how that he was, uh, uh, you know, he, he, uh, uh, his heart was lifted up, his mind hardened in pride. He was disposed. They took his glory from him. He was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beast. His dwelling was the wild asses. They fed him with grass like ox. His body was wet with dew. And then he says, Thou, Bel Shelter, have not humbled yourself. You knew all this, but you have not humbled yourself. And God's about to teach you a lesson. God's about to teach you a lesson. Is he about to do that to our nation? Is God about to teach us a lesson? Remember, he's harder on the ones that have known him and drifted away. Woe to the nations that forget God. Woe to the nations that forget God. Amen? Church, this, this corona thing going on, you know what? There's going to be some people that ain't going to come back. You know it? They're going to drift away. They're like, I don't need that. I just stay home. I do my own thing. Well, this is what Bill Shadder would He's doing his own thing. And so um, he uh, gives him a history lesson about his grandfather. And um, he teaches him many, many means numbered, numbered. That's twice. Many, many. It don't mean many, 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 many tickle the parcel. Amen. Many, many. Numbered, numbered. Your, your number's up. Have you heard somebody say, hey, your number's up. That's what it meant. Your number's up tonight, Belshazzar. See, we're just wondering, what, what night my number going to be up? Amen. We don't know, do we? We don't know. We just don't know. We need to be ready to meet the Lord. Uh, Bible tells us in Psalm 90, teach us, Lord, to number our days and give our hearts unto wisdom. See, that's what ought to be our prayer. Teach me to number my days and, 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 and to give us wisdom. Amen. Tikal means uh, uh, the weight, the divine scales. Uh, it means he didn't weigh enough. He said, I've weighed you, Belshazzar. You don't, you don't weigh enough. You don't measure up. You, you just don't measure up. Peres means divided. It means it's been given to somebody else. You know, God can take away what you got and give it to somebody else. Amen. He can do that. He can do that. Um, but, um, but it's too late. Hey, your bell said your time has come. Pride has lifted you up. And you know, all this I'm going to say today that's going on in the world, I, I don't agree with it. I, I think two things is getting us ready for the Antichrist. You know what they are. Now, some of you are going to, you're going to hate me for this, but, but, but that's all right. I'm just telling you what I think. Uh, I, I, you know, people are getting a lot of tattoos today. I think you're getting ready for people to mark of the beast. Amen? Now, if you've got something like love, mama, you know, people's had all the whole bodies covered up. They get saved and they regret it. And they say, man, I hate I've done all that. Well, you've got to live with it. Amen. Sometimes we do stuff we regret and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. The Bible plainly tells us, no, don't mark your body up. See, God made a masterpiece. Amen. He made it. He made a masterpiece. And he said, I want you to be like the heathen now. I don't want you to mark your body. He said, I don't even want you to cut your hair a certain way. I want you to square your head off like them heathens back in the day. And, and you know, you can look like a heathen sometimes. Uh, women got their hair cut short like men today. You can't tell if a man or a woman. Amen. So we, we're just so confused today. The Bible said God has given a woman a hair for a covering. You don't have to wear a mask over you. No, he's mad. I'm not talking about masks today. I'm talking about these burkas. They got all them covered up with burkas. Hey, I tell my wife, I say, hey, you look good in a burka one day. Amen. Got, got it all covered. That old black thing got you all covered. But, but uh, see, God said, I've given a woman her hair for a covering. And, you know, it's a shame for a man, he said, to have long hair. But it's glory for a woman to have long hair. So 
So he said, don't cut your hair. Don't shave your head. They, the women back then, they shaved their head because they're prostitutes. That's, that's what the Bible talks about when you read that in the Bible. Amen. So God says, I want you to look like one of mine. Amen. So well, what I'm just saying, the Bible said in Revelation 13, he's going to give you a mark or a number. You see what I'm saying? That people, it's, bar it's just breaking down the barriers or getting things on your body. Another thing about bowing down to men if you read Daniel, everything in the Bible is an example about what's going to come. The Bible said the Antichrist is going to cause you to bow down before him. Amen? That's what Nebuchadnezzar did. You hear a certain kind of music, you've got to bow down. The ones that didn't bow down got thrown in that fiery furnace. He said in the last days, if you don't bow down, you'll be beheaded. And you know, years ago, people used to say, Oh, man, that's ancient. People don't behead nobody no more. Well, go over to the Middle East. Amen? <laughs> they cut your head off, cut your arms, everything off. And so what I'm saying is everything we read in the Bible is, is a precursor of what's maybe coming in the last days. So what I'm just saying that these things are getting us ready for who's coming, the lawless one. The Bible calls him the Antichrist. He's got about 25 different names in the Bible. The man of sin. He promotes sin. Why are we seeing all that rebellion going on in Seattle? Lawlessness. Getting us ready for the lawless one. I'm just telling you, folks, what do you think is going to happen when the church is out of this world and the restraining force is gone? Because didn't he say, he said, you're salt and light. Salt preserves when the preservation agent is gone, evil just going to explode. And they'll be looking for somebody to solve all their problems. I'm just telling you that this morning. That's just, that ain't going to cost you no more this morning. Amen? No more. And uh, uh, so if you got a tattoo, hey, don't worry about it. Amen? But I'm just telling all I'm saying, I'm not going to condemn you for it, but I'm just saying it's getting us ready for what's coming. It's breaking our barriers down. All right? That's all I'm saying. But he's... Um, this is what God says. Belshazzar rejected the truth. Uh, he, he'd rebelled against the things of God. He's mocking God now. And this is what God says in 2 Thessalonians 2. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now will live until he be taken out of the way. That means as far as things going on, the restraining force will be removed. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the uh, spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness of them that perish. I want you to listen to this part. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. There's no excuse for nobody not being saved. The reason you're not saved because you rejected the truth. The reason you're not saved because I want to hang on to my sin. The reason you're not saved because you like Bill Shadger, you built up in pride, and you don't want to submit. Amen? That's, that's the only reason. There's no other reason. And listen to this part. And for this cause, God, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. You say, God will deceive me? Well, that's what it says. It says, God will send them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie because you like Bill Shadow, you don't went too far, it's too late. You know, book of Romans, first chapter, he said, God gives them over. Read it for yourself when you come. God gives them over. There's people that go too far, folks. And that's why we always say, be saved today. That's reading God, the Holy Spirit always says, be saved today. Now, now is the accepted time. Because God not obligated to you no more. Amen. Once you've heard it one time. Um, so we, we uh, as a nation, we have rejected the Word of God. And that's what Belshazzar, he rejected the Word of God. He knew it, but he rejected it. So uh, what was the charge? Verse 23 that thou hast lifted up thyself against the God of heaven, and 
they have brought the vessels of this house before thee, and thou and your Lord, your wife, concubine, have drunk wine in them. Thou have praised the God of silver, of gold, of brass, of iron, of wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose all thy ways hast thou not glorified. See, that was a charge right there. That, that's what God charged him with. In verse 30, it tells us that night, Belshazzar stood before the God of heaven. Down there it says, And that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. That night. You know, what happened was that as uh, they were having their parties, See, while we partying and carrying on in the United States, our enemies are tunneling under, trying to destroy us. They had the great Euphrates River that, that uh, went, that, that actually used, they used as a moat. To, they thought they were impenetrable because this great Euphrates River guarded that gigantic city of Babylon from all the enemies. But while they were partying, you know what the, uh, uh, the, the Medes were doing? Their enemies? They were tunneling under the river, diverting the river, and it dried the riverbed up. They got into the palace before they even knew they was on the place. Without really firing a shot, they took it over, and they killed Belshazzar that night. He said, tonight, your soul be required of you, Belshazzar, and it was. And so he was rotten to the core. He had his chance. He knew his grandfather's story. His example, his salvation story, he knew what happened when people ignored the true God. You know, and um, sometimes it's good for us to weigh us, ourselves on the scale of God's Word because it gives us an accurate picture where we stand. Amen, doesn't it? When we read God's Word, it gives us a picture where we stand. See, that's it, it, it's, it's kind of a a scale. Where do I stand? See, we can read the things of David. You can go back in there and read some of those penitential psalms, and that means uh, penitent, penitential, penitent psalms. And and there's several of them. There's Psalm 3, 32, 38, 51, 102, 130, 143. And one of the greatest ones is in Psalms 51, where David, he's, when he acknowledged his sin, before uh, the Lord about Bathsheba. And he says, after he had gone into Bathsheba, you know, he's confronted. God confronted him. He confronts us every, every day about our sin. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly with mine iniquity, from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression, my sin is ever before me. So you can't forget it, can you? Can't forget it. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, thou hast, that thou mightest be justified when you speak and be clear when thou judges. See, he, he read that and, and see, he, he balanced himself. When I read that, do I feel like David felt? Do I? We got to ask her, do I feel that when I read God's word? Have I ever been broken in my heart over my sin when I read God's Word? That's, that's what God wants. He likes them just balances and scales. Uh, you turn to the life of Christ. When I read the Word of God, have I been conformed to His likeness? Have I? Do I apply? Have I been conformed to His likeness? Do, do I have Jesus' humility and meekness and the spirit He taught? And displayed at all times. Do I? See, when you read the Word of God and you see Jesus, Lord, help me to be more like you. See, do we, do we pray that? Do we really? Or we want to be like Belshazzar. Lord, I'm not changing. I like my life. Read the epistles. And see if your life lines up with them. We ever been like Apostle Paul said, Lord, what a sinner I am. <laughs> Who will rescue me from this body of death? Have I ever prayed that, see? When I read the Word of God, and I get convicted of my sin. Have you ever confessed and said, Lord, I'm, I'm a chief of all sinners? That's what David, that's what Paul said. Lord, I, I'm the chiefest of all sinners. 
I am. Humble. Can you say for me to live as Christ and die as gain? When we read in Philippians 121. For me to live as Christ and die as gain. Amen. Do, you, do I say that when I read God's word? If not, Lord, bring me to this place. Give me true repentance. Give me real faith. Amen. Help me to be more like Christ. Let me be weighed in your balances and found to be no more wanting. Amen. Let me not be found wanting on the day of judgment. Let my scales balance out. Amen. Let them balance. Let Jesus. Lord, I can't do it. My, my scales are sin on this side. Boom. That's, that's what it means when all of sin comes short of the glory. We missed the mark. But Jesus made it for us, didn't he? And we can be so happy today about that. We can be so happy about Jesus coming. Because the Bible said in John 3, 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And folks, look at your life today. Let's all look at our lives and say, how do I balance out on God's scale? When he sees me, does he see Jesus? Or does he just see me? He just sees you and you're in trouble, amen? But if you're hidden in Christ, he'll rescue you. He'll save you. He'll, he'll make you more into like Christ. That's the goal of Christian life is to grow in grace and knowledge of, of the truth, amen? Grow, grow, grow. See, that garden out there, we'd get aggravated if we went out there and it stayed about that tall, wouldn't we? we say, what's wrong with this thing? You know, I got some fruit trees at home. I, I ride by this thing every year. There ain't nothing on them. You know what I'm going to do next year? I'm going to cut them down. I've been waiting on them things 10 years. My wife says, cut them things down. I said, no, I'm going to give them another year. It's just, and every year, same old thing, nothing. Nothing. I'm going to cut them down. I'm going to do them, plant some more. Lord willing, amen. Now, i got to get my grandkids to dig the holes. I can't dig. I can't dig. Hey, hey, I, I hate to always call them and say, hey, they know what I'm fixing to say. I got a job for y'all. <laughs> so they kind of avoid me now. <laughs> well, I try not to do that too much, but, but, I, but I need them, amen. It's good to have grandkids and kids that'll help you, amen. I love them. But folks, pray for America. I, I, I pray we have a great outbreak and revival in America. That's the only thing that's going to save us. I, I believe we're like Belshazzar. We've gone too far. I believe that today, folks. I really do. I, 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 don't, I read an article today that said, there's no bringing America back together. We're too divided. We're too far apart. The only thing that's going to bring our nation together is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Change men's hearts. Cause us to love our neighbor as ourselves. See, I, I don't go about trying to hurt nobody every day. Amen. I really don't. I want. I just live my life, and I try to help people, and 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 do what I think they that I would like done for myself. Hey, if I'm going down the road and I see a board in the road, you know what I'm going to do? If I can, I'm going to get out and move it where nobody hit it. Because more than likely, one of my daughters or my wife's going to come out and run over that nail in it. Amen. <laughs> Two, but but it's looking after you, neighbor. Just just you know, I think. Well, I don't want to get out here and get run over. Amen. I'm going to give my life over two before. But you know what I'm talking about? Little things like that. If we would just do the little things one for another, show courtesy, and our nation would be transformed and live and let the Jesus live through us. So I, I, I wish you'd come today pray for our nation. If you need to come today and pray for yourself, say, Lord, my life's not balanced. Not only does he want you to, when he's going to weigh that balance, he wants your life to be balanced. He don't want it to be out of control. If you've got something in your life, sin, that does so easy to beset, it, come, beset you, come and confess that thing. Say, Lord, I've got a sin in my life I can't handle. It's stronger than me. I'm going to turn it over to you. I don't want to do it, but, Lord, I, I'm, it's, strong, it's too strong for me. I, I can't give it up. Help me. And I guarantee you he'll help you with it. Amen. He'll help you. Jesus will save you. If you believe the word of God now, 
He said, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Simple as that, folks. Simple. Nothing complicated about that. Let's bow our head in a word of prayer. Uh, Brother Rick, if you'd like to come, brother. Give us a word of invitation. Father, I come today. I pray for our nation. I pray for those that are here today. I pray for myself, Lord. If there's any sin that displeasing to you today, Lord, I pray that you bring it to our attention, my attention. You might confess it, forsake it, be forgiven of it. But we want to be more like you, Lord. Help us today, Lord. Help our nation. Help our nation heal. Help us to be good neighbors. Help us to be followers of Christ and walk as he walked. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, Brother Rick. I surrender all. <clears throat> you stand with us, please. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I free. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my friend. I know.